Today, we're gonna make a dish drying rack for the sink. Gonna make it out of wood, finish it with some oil. Maybe I can show you how to work at home and some tips on how to do it with regular tools or if you got more professional tools, you could do it like that as well. So I envision wood slats. I'm gonna round them a little bit. I'm gonna notch them so that the, the piece can sit down in here and rest on this ledge. I wanna measure the space in between. On my sink, it's about 16 and a half. So I'm gonna make it back to 16 and a quarter so it's not jammed up tight. We're gonna have little blocks in between and those little blocks, I'm gonna space eight and a half inches apart. And then we're gonna have another slat. We're gonna screw these pieces together and then we're gonna put a little wooden plug here at the end to cover the last remaining screw. I found this uh, knotty pine that had been glued together. Because I have natural pine trim in my showroom, I'm gonna use this material. You see these big knots, I don't wanna have the the big knots in the piece and I want to have about 17 and a half inches so I can just get a couple pieces here and uh, here I could get a piece and uh, I'm going to make the pieces about an inch and a half so I don't mind getting a little bit of this knot in there and then I need some short blocking and we'll get that out of the waste. Okay so over to the table saw I'm going to set this for inch and three quarters and we'll set the blade up just about a tooth higher than the board. The teeth should always clear because that way uh, it's easier for the chips to clear out through. Okay, uh, some of my boards here are not perfectly straight. Um, I don't know if I can illustrate that here. You can see a little gap here in the middle. Um, here too, you can see a little gap in the middle. Uh, so that means when we put all the boards together with the spacers in between, they won't be perfectly flat. Now I'm gonna take a belt sander and hand belt sand it, and it'll get pretty true that way. But uh, the reason I didn't joint these or run them through my more expensive equipment is because you may not have that at home. And again, I wanna show you how to use boards that are more along the lines of what you would find at the home center. So I'm gonna take uh, some of these boards and cut them to length. The first thing I wanna do is show you how to do that with a handsaw. So let me get a handsaw and we'll get started with that. Here are two hand saws that, uh, again, you can purchase pretty inexpensively. I'm thinking that this saw might cost about $10. It has these high teeth. Uh, it will give a little bit of chip out on the cut when you cut it. Here's another saw, it's called a Japanese flush saw. This one is a little bit dull. Uh, I would not sharpen these myself, I'd buy a new one. But uh, this is gonna cut a little slower, but give you a finer cut. Okay, so I'm making a line on two sides there. When you have a saw, normally a saw is a very reflective surface. When you cut, if you cut at an angle, mirror image of this bends in the angle and, and doesn't read true. If you hold it exactly 90 degrees, this line visually through that mirror image of the saw will run true and straight. And that's something, when you get used to this, you watch that, and it helps you keep this saw perfectly 90 degrees to the board. I'm using a high bench, but the reason I'm putting my leg on it is to show that you can brace it. And I would suggest doing this on a step stool or something that's a little bit lower. So here, I'm holding the saw, I'm putting my thumb against the blade to, to brace it, and the hardest part is getting it started on the line. Okay, so there I see the line. I'm holding it with my finger. I'm watching that shadow to keep it 90 degrees. When you get near the end of the cut, you want to be careful. Go a little slower, a little gentler. Because that last little bit 
will want to tend to chip away if you go too fast. And there we go. So there you can see the, the saw cut. I'm not gonna say it's perfect. It's, it's close, probably within a degree or two, but for the blocking, for the ends, by the time we get all done and you sand it, it's gonna be fine. Now, with my cutoff pieces, we need a total of, um, we have seven spaces in between, two blocks, one here, one here, uh, so we need a total of 14 blocks. Clearly, I have enough wood here. In the length here, 17 and a half. So again, the notches are gonna be made, uh, I'm guessing, uh, about like this. We'll probably just make them 5 eighths square because it's a little easier set up that way. Um, so then my spacer blocks, well, I wanted to have eight and a half inches in the middle. So we'll, first we'll find the middle. So there's my center line. And then we wanted to go eight and a half inches wide. So I'm putting a mark there. Put this at four and a quarter, which is the center. We'll go eight and a half to zero. So this is where the end of my blocks are gonna go. And then maybe we can go two and a half. I don't want to make it too short because I don't want these pieces to split. But I think two and a half is good. If you're doing this from the home center, get a piece of trim that's about a half an inch wide. I'm going to cut a few of these boards to a half an inch wide. Okay, I'm setting this to just a little bit over a half an inch thick. Really, I'm cutting about 9 sixteenths. I am only gonna cut halfway through on either side. Um, a little safer with a small piece like this, a little less strain, but when I go through there, my hand's not really exposed to the blade as much, and that's an important consideration. All right, so now we're gonna cut the blocks to length. Again, you can do this with a handsaw, just mark them off and cut each one off at two and a half inches. Uh, for speed's sake, I'm gonna do it on the table saw. Now, here too, so um, I'm gonna take a scrap piece of wood. This is three, well, let's, let's say it's an inch and three quarters. So I'm gonna set the saw at an inch and three quarters more than two and a half. So I got two and a half, it'd be uh, three and a half, four and a half, I think it's four and uh, a quarter. Let's see if my math is correct. Here we can see that. Let's take the tape measure. So this is a spacer block. And then what I'm left with is two and a half inches on this. Now, the reason I'm doing that, I'll show you. When we put the crosscut fence in here, if we cut it off here, when we make the finished cut, this piece would be jammed against the fence and there's a real strong possibility this would get jammed, go like that, the blade would take it and throw it back at you. It's really a very dangerous situation. Many years ago when I started in this industry, I, I worked for a factory and I was cutting off two by two foot plywood panels and we did not use this technique and this piece kicked back and hit me in the groin right here. And I had a blood blister about like that. I stayed out of work for like three days, uh, but all could have been avoided by using a block such as this, because when now, when I use this block and then we go here and when we cut off this piece, it, it's free, it can't get jammed. And so just with my finger, I'll just take it and move it away from the blade and, and it'll be very safe. Here I'm gonna take about half of the blocks 
and cut that notch. So now we're gonna use a similar technique. I'm gonna move the fence away uh, because when we cut these little blocks off, again, if they get jammed up in that spot, it's problematic. So this is a little bit safer way to do it. Holding all those pieces down. This uh, is a little step stool that I have in the shop if I need to get to a shelf. Some type of low thing like this is very beneficial when you're, you're cutting a board like this because you can either put your knee on it like this, but I'm in fact gonna, gonna stand on it. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put, I don't do this every day anymore. Uh, again, we're looking at that mirror image in the saw. This is gonna be a little bit hard starting, but Okay, so there's our notch. Again, this is plenty adequate for what we're doing. You can see the pencil line I put. You can see a little bit of it, that's fine. You could also cut several of these at a time if you clamp them together just the way I did on the table saw. But frankly, if you're good at hand cutting like I am, it, you know, and you're just doing a few pieces, this is not a lot slower than using the table saw. Um, a lot of times simple hand tools are very quick and efficient. So that's how you can do the notches by hand. Okay, so we talked about rounding off these corners uh, and approximately like this. So I'm just gonna do the first one by hand and then I'll use that to replicate on other corners. So here I'm using uh, very coarse sandpaper. This is like 40 grit or actually this is 36 grit. Um, you know, you may not be able to find this easily. Floor sanders use this. Um, but on this soft wood, this is pretty efficient and then you don't need any power tools. Um, if you had a scroll saw or a band saw, you could cut this corner. If you had a router, you could cut it with a the router. There's all kinds of professional tools, but here's how you would do it by hand, okay? And you can see how rapidly that cuts and I'm just trying to get a nice rounded shape. Okay, so there you can see the basic shape. Now I'm gonna switch from 36 grit. I'm actually jumping all the way to 120. Um, usually it's recommended you use something in between, but let's see how this works. Okay, and you can see how that corner looks. Now, when we finish up the rest of this project, I'm actually gonna take like some 120 and all these square edges, I'm gonna hit so that we get any roughness off the edge. Uh, and here also on the corners on the outside, and that'll smooth them up. Okay, even on the bottom, I'm gonna sand it. Like full length, like that, and like that. Now, on the bottom here, you'll see that we have saw cuts. On, okay, and that's pretty smooth with a hardwood, you probably want to start with a saw cut with a 60 or 80 grit. Actually, I will do the rest of them that way. But even with 120 grit, it's pretty fast on pine to get all the saw cuts out. So here, once you've done your first corner, okay, you can use that corner as a guide and mark 
all your other corners so that they come out relatively uniform and uh, give you a nice finished appearance. Okay, so I have all my pieces together, and uh, as you recall, we wanted about eight and a half inches in between here. Well, I'm seeing about eight and three quarter on the tape measure because I'm using our blocks as spacers. So how to line these up so they all end up being the same distance from the end. And again, I'm not sure they're gonna be perfect, but uh, visually, you know, they should be like, pretty close, like something like this spaced apart. They might be a little bit one way or the other, but I think they're gonna be pretty close because we're gonna use a consistent spacer. So I'm using this, and then I'm holding this block, as you see, just like that. I'm gonna draw a little pencil line here, um, which should not be real visible in the end product. Okay, so you could see where I have it. So um, I, want to show you how to do this at home. Now, I don't usually use nails in the shop. There's nothing wrong with them. So I had these siding nails from like 20 years ago, but they're a little bit too long for this first piece. You see they, they, they stand too long. So I cut them off shorter, and now they're enough to go through this half inch piece without coming all the way through to the other side. For this project, because it's uh, going to be in the sink and get wet, I'm going to use this wood glue, which is type on 3. And this is a waterproof glue, so that's uh, uh, something worth buying. You can get a small amount of it. Just putting a little bit of glue, not too much, I think that's good. And uh, putting it down there, I'll keep that spacer block right there. Now the other end, I'm going to use... Uh, you know, my power nailer, show you what that looks like as well. Okay, and so there you see the first piece put on. So you wanna keep these pretty close to being flush. I felt that one move a little bit, but it's good now. And uh, so that's the first piece put on. Okay, the second piece is gonna be like this. You see that my sinker is still a little bit long. You want to make sure that you get the proper nails. I'm just going to shorten those a little bit. Putting a little bit of glue on both sides here. Put a little bit there. Okay, taking the second piece, putting it on top. Now, again, with a square, uh, you could also use a block, uh, but anything just to hold it so it lines up with the end. All right, so I'm gonna finish up the rest of the job using uh, my power nailer. Uh, these ends are not perfectly flush. I'm gonna flush them up in my power sander, but I'm also gonna show you how to flush them up with a block sander or maybe use a belt sander at home. The last piece, uh, just for decorative purposes, you could nail this and just use a little wood filler in the nails or leave the nail holes, but I'm gonna actually countersink a screw and put a wood plug. Here I have a, uh, a countersink bit with a 3 8 counter bore, and then here I have a 3 8 plug cutter to cut a wood plug that will fit into this counter board hole. Um, all right, so here you, you can see that my screw length is a little bit too short because uh, I'm going to shorten this up a little bit. So I loosen up um, the countersink head. There's an Allen screw on this model on either side. Okay, so you can see that my screw is going to go in about three quarters into fresh wood. And if you recall, when we put our staples or nails in, they were offset. 
So there's nothing in the middle here that I'm going to hit. Okay, so now you can see all of the plugs and we'll just get towards the back there a little bit. I'll hold that with my finger and you can see what a plug looks like. There's one, another one, another one. Get a little bit of that waterproof glue. to make sure it's on all sides of the hole to seal it. And that way. And a nice contrast there. This is not totally smooth. Um, it's pretty good, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. So here again, if I go back to the coarse sandpaper, okay, going in this direction, it would take a while. You know, you might spend half an hour sanding this. Here you can see in this area, I've gotten the saw marks out. Again, you can step sand going down to, you know, 80 or 100 grit. This is going from 36. You could go to 60, then 80 to 100. I'm going right from 36 to 120. And that little section is done now, okay? So, but to finish up the rest of it, I'm gonna use a belt sander and uh, not so concerned with the bottom, but uh, the belt sander, it's easy. So with the sandpaper at the edge of the block, I'm going to go through every square opening just like this. So that's what it is raw. I just as soon leave it like this, but because it's gonna get wet, it'll never stay looking like this. So uh, putting on the oil is uh, gonna be a good thing. So let's go upstairs and we'll get that done. Here we have coconut oil. I don't have a whole lot left, but uh, I've got some there. Uh, you can see it's just started to liquefy. Uh, it does that at you know probably 80 or 90 degrees. Um, but I'm going to put this in a double boiler just to have some water there and I'm going to heat this up on the stove and uh, just doing that until it actually liquefies inside. Um, and the reason for the water is, well, I don't want the glass to break, but uh, heating up a wax or an oil in a pan directly on the fire can burn it. So I'm guessing that took, I don't know, three or four minutes maybe. Obviously, if it was a full jar, it would take longer. Okay, so we get that good and wet with coconut oil. And uh, you can see here, just rubbing it on. The reason I made it liquid, you can see, is to try to get it to flow into uh, these in-between areas, which is, you know, a little bit hard to do. You can see the beautiful contrast to that walnut section there. And this is something that anytime this unit appears a little dried out, 
just uh, give it a good cleaning and uh, let it dry and then uh, re-oil it. Okay, and then we're just gonna set it right here to dry. All right, so that's it. That's our project for today. Um, making uh, the little drying rack. Uh, again, you can see what it looks like. We've just oiled it, so we're letting that soak in and dry right here on the sink. Uh, putting the plates in it, you can see how those go. Uh, that's great. You know, the bowls here probably won't fit so good, but you could put coffee cups on it and so forth. They'll just drain through. And if you get uh, silverware or whatever, that, that'll work too. So that's our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, consider subscribing, uh, hitting the notification bell, then you'd be alerted when we have new videos of this nature. Uh, thanks so much for coming and supporting our channel.